David here with Figboot on pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have for you something a little bit out of the ordinary to share with you, and that is a gravity-defying pen currently being offered as a Kickstarter by a company by the name of Novium, and that offering is the Hoverpen 3.0. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this latest incarnation of the hover pen. I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some size comparisons and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Novium for providing this pen for review. Now, with this being version 3.0, you would correctly assume that there were two previous versions of this pen. There was the original hover pen, uh, and then there was version 2.0, which I reviewed a while back. Now, the first two versions were rollerballs, but this latest version, 3.0, can also be purchased with a fountain pen conversion kit, which is an interesting addition. Uh, the Kickstarter campaign for this pen is winding down. It's only open for a few more days. Uh, so far, it's been fairly popular with over 1,500 backers, which equates to almost a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, in order to get a closer look at this new pen, please join me over here at camera two. Now, just as a reminder, this is Hover Pen 2.0. I realize the angles are going to be a little bit wonky here, so bear with me. But you can see, when I turn it to the side, the basic concept is there is a magnetic base, and then there is a mag magnetic rim, which holds the pen in place. Uh, and then you can even spin it like a little bit of a fidget toy. Uh, and you can see here that this is a rollerball. So what changes have been made to version 3.0, which they are calling the Future Edition. 2.0 here was called the Interstellar Edition, but 3.0 is the Future Edition. Um, we have the base, and then we have the pen. Um, let's take a look at the base first. In comparison, you can see what it looks like in comparison to the 2.0. You could see that the magnetic portion uh, on the 2.0 was at the bottom of the stand, and on the 3.0, it's been uh, the uh, magnetic axis has been raised, which will also decrease the angle at which this pen sits. Uh, 2.0 sat at about a 60 degree angle, and 3.0 will sit at about a 45 degree angle. Uh, there is some rubber on the bottom of the base, uh, so I found the base to be sec uh, secure. I don't find it scooting around my desk or anything like that. Okay, now let's take a look at the pen. Uh, it is made from aircraft grade aluminum and is fairly light. Um, this color here is what they are calling deep black. Um, it's also available in frosted silver, and both colors have a bit of a satin finish to it. The tip comes to a rounded point. Uh, the cap and barrel are straight. Uh, there is a silver colored band indicating the transition between the two. Uh, and then at the back of the barrel, it has this aluminum piece here, which is what affixes to the base. Uh, the cap snaps off and underneath we have a Schmidt stainless steel nib. Now, Schmidt sizes don't quite equate to the uh, standard nib sizes. I believe this is what they call their 241, which is kind of between a number four and number five. Uh, this nib is available in either extra fine, fine, or medium. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. Um, this section is rather long and thin. Uh, it begins with a slight flare, which is used in the capping mechanism, and then angles up at an even rate until you reach a step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, this pen is plenty long enough to use unposted, which is a good thing because the cap is not designed to post. Um, I will say that the pen is a bit back weighted. Um, not so much that it's uncomfortable, but enough that I could notice it. The magnet and metal here in the back account for that. And the center of balance is kind of right around here, near the, toward the back of the barrel. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a Schmidt converter is provided. Um, I mentioned there is also an option to have this pen convert to a rollerball. Uh, you simply remove this section and then we have the rollerball section right here and you can replace it with there. Um, you can see that the section is slight, uh, shaped slightly different. Um, now, the main problem is that now you have a loaded converter that you'll immediately need to clean out. Now, I have another pen which converts from a fountain to a rollerball, and that would be the Visconti Millionaire. 
Now, I, I realize that these pens are in significantly different price ranges, but with this particular pen, it actually comes with a little tube that you see here, where you could store the rollerball or fountain pen section when they are not in use. Um, the cool thing is that it is designed in a way so that you could have this plunger converter here full of ink and you could place it within the case without risking uh, the uh, ink being uh, pressed out of the case at all and being activated. Uh, like I mentioned, I realize that this is in a totally different price range than the hover pen, but just having that little case is something that uh, was nice. So I thought that if they would be able to offer something like that, it would have been a little bit nice. They do offer a case which fits the entire pen though. Okay, let me show you how this pen interacts with the base. Uh, you place the back end of the barrel on this particular point here, and the pen will magically hover in place. Uh, well, it's not really magic, it's magnets, but you get the idea. Uh, let me hold it here at the side. So you can see that it's about a 45 degree angle. Now, when you are actually placing the pen on this pad, uh, you need to be rather intentional about guiding it to the landing pad. Uh, if you hold your pen too loosely, then the magnets on the side will attract it and you'll kind of find yourself kind of wrestling with it in, in order to get it where it needs to be. Um, now, once you get the pen where it needs to be, uh, you can spin it if you should show choose, like a fidget toy. Now, I have found a couple of issues with it, as you just saw. First of all, you need to be a little bit gentle with you sp your spins. If you spin it too aggressively, then the pen will have a tendency to kind of wobble around a little bit and become attracted to one of the sides, like that. Um, so you just need to be a little bit more gentle with your spins. Uh, the second and more important issue is that spinning it with the rollerball conversion is just fine, but my first thought about spinning it when you have had set up as a fountain pen to use uh, was to think that it would potentially be a very bad idea. Um, I decided to do a little experiment. I inked the pen and spun it a few times, nothing too aggressive, uh, and then I took it to the sink to check it out. You can see that there was a fair amount of ink which creeped out of the nib. And did it get inside of the cap? Yes, it did. Uh, so if you have this in the fountain pen setup, then I would strongly recommend not spinning it. Ink will get everywhere. Uh, something else about this version, uh, with the, the 2.0, the tip of the pen was actually facing downward. So when you picked it up, then all you did was remove the, uh, the cap and then you were ready to write. But then on this 3.0, uh, the pen is reversed. So it's actually the back of the barrel which is affixed to the base. So when you remove it from the base, then you need to take off the cap, turn the pen around, and then you're ready to go. Uh, the motion can uh, just be a little bit unnatural and cumbersome at times. Just something to keep in mind. I'll put a link to the Kickstarter page for this campaign in the notes below, but the price is $109 for a rollerball only version and $119 for the fountain pen version. Uh, it's $179 for a version with both the rollerball and fountain pen sections, uh, and then that option has some additional inclusions as well, but you can check out the campaign on Kickstarter for those details. Okay, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons and a writing sample with the fountain pen nib. In regard to size comparisons, uh, here it is with a Lamy Studio. Uh, here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. Uh, and then here it is with a Narwhal Original Demonstrator. And then in regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Twisby Eco. Uh, and then a Montblanc Starwalker. And finally, here is the Leonardo Memento Zero Carolina Midnight. I know I've shown this a number of times, but I was really happy how this pen came out. Uh, and if you stay tuned, there might be a special edition of this pen coming out very soon. But that's what it looks like in comparison to the Hover Pen 3.0. In regard to uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Leonardo. And here it is with the Studio. And here it is with the Pilot Metropolitan. So here we go with the writing sample for the Hover Pen 3.0.
And this is a stainless steel nib and it is fine. And the ink I'm using today is a new ink that I'm really excited about, which is Monarca Cardona. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, Monarca is a company based out of uh, Mexico, uh, and they've started to introduce a number of really cool inks that I'll be sharing here soon. Um, it's a nice red with uh, kind of some uh, goldish sheen to it. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to diamine communication breakdown. Uh, and then here it is with Levenger pomegranate. This is what the bottle looks like. One of the really cool things is it comes with this little wood stand that, so you can put the ink in there. Uh, it has a little pen rest in the front. And then when you're inking your pen, then there's no risk of it uh, turning over, which is a really nice design. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I will say that this fine Schmidt nib uh, is fairly decent. Um, it uh, isn't necessarily overly smooth. It does have a fair amount of feedback to it. You're, you can get a little bit of line variation there. Um, I wouldn't call it overly bad feedback. It just um, has enough that you can feel it. And it is uh, feel more like a fine than a medium. Uh, the ink flow is very good on it. And in regard to some reverse writing, It's a little sharp, but it gets the job done in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So there you have the Hover Pen 3.0. Um, it's an interesting novelty. Uh, it isn't without its faults, but if you're looking for something a little bit different or you're looking for a gift for someone, then the Hover Pen is something that you might want to take a look into. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.